Hi, hello. My name's Helen Martin and I'm both a senior lecturer in contemporary crafts at Falmouth University and at the moment I'm an AHRC PhD candidate with the 3D3 Consortium engaging in an interdisciplinary practice-led PhD exploring the communication of archaeology through digital craft practice. My paper today explores digital intervention, conceptualisation and the notion of recycling in the communication of archaeology through digital craft practice. So what, you may ask, is digital craft practice? It was writer and critic Peter Dormer who said, it's not handicraft that defines contemporary craftsmanship, it's craft as knowledge that empowers a maker to take charge of technology. There are myriad opportunities for makers to embrace a range of digital technologies such as digital printing, CAD, 3D modelling, CNC <coughs> cutting and milling. The recent Crafts Council makeshift conference at Manchester's Museum of Science and Industry delivered presentations that exposed the stories behind collaborations which produced liquid lighting, 3D printed hearts and robotics that communicate feelings. <coughs> Indeed, a wide range of 21st century materials and technologies expand the notion of what craft objects are or might become. Current research strives to identify and evaluate the ideas, procedures and techniques that give access to the knowledge that exists between maker, machine and material. We understand that craft practice relies heavily upon tacit knowledge, which resides within any individual maker. In addition, in addition, makers continually generate new knowledge through practice. According to Richard Sennett, what seems to distinguish craft from other disciplines is that it relies on process, materiality, and the tacit made explicit through critical reflection. Professor David Gauntlet, in his recent publication, Making is Connecting, identifies two essential dimensions to craft, the inherent satisfaction of making and the sense of being alive within the process. He considers that ideas, learning and knowledge come from within the practice of making. <coughs> However, it's increasingly the case that making, in its broadest sense, also allows for distinct and nuanced connections, engaging imagination, contextualisation and conceptual representations. Now I produce individually traditionally crafted objects that retain the soul of the material and the skill of the human hand. Conceptually I increasingly turn my focus upon the domestic. I'm interested in the repetition of use, the beauty of a vital tool and meditation in the everyday task and the rhythm of doing. I reinterpret and translate what I consider to be significant. I often produce things alluding to function but purposefully fraudulent. <coughs> In spite of the fact that I'm largely the conceptual director of these works, it's increasingly the case that elements of my digital practice are co-authored. Historically, archaeology has been communicated in many ways through museum display of artefacts, academic publications, conferences, of course, lectures and public talks. More recently, there have been many exciting developments in the utilisation of digital tools which have greatly enhanced audience experience. My practice-led research assumes exhibition as the agent for dissemination. I hope to track the impact of creative thinking upon the understanding of archaeological finds and practices by members of the public. Tremeau in Cornwall is my case study. It's been a long-standing site of making, evidenced through archaeological investigations, proving that this is one of the earliest sites of metal casting in the UK. My reinterpretive works are responses to the prehistoric Tremeau finds, which are stone moulds, bronze jewellery and ceramic sherds and vessels. Working together with Cornwall Archaeological Unit, Cornwall Museum Services and the myriad various technicians within Farmouth and Exeter Universities has meant that I've been able to access and scan objects, reproduce finds and manipulate and the results to produce unique artefacts. In the development of my conceptual framework and in order to promote a less autobiographical approach, I interviewed archaeologists who had been involved with the various digs performed at Tremont. With only one publication available, and this being purely factual and archaeological in format, I needed to establish a greater understanding of the site. 
I use this as an opportunity to collect the thoughts and feelings of those involved, not necessarily contained within the pages of a relatively dry publication. So I explore the engagement between digital craft practice and archaeology and how this might enhance the communication of archaeological finds to the public. I'll be exhibiting many of the Trumeau finds alongside reconstructive and reinterpretive works. Of course, reinterpretation of archaeology through artistic practice is well established and studies have investigated contemporary sculpture as an interpretive resource for archaeology. Cordula Hansen developed a methodology through which the communicative impact of sculpture and specific artworks were assessed. This was, however, restricted by the lack of data relating to the visitor experience. Experimental archaeology explores tactile understandings of material engagement and is primarily concerned with reproduction. The value of experiential and experimental research has widely enhanced the communication of archaeology. I speak from experience when I say that reconstruction engages directly with the path of the original maker. It's fascinating to take the same journey, and through trial and error it's possible to experience a partial transportation in time. The use of the digital within archaeology enables reconstruction as both virtual and physical. There are an increasing number of exciting reconstructions through the virtual recreation of scanned sites and artefacts, and there are also excellent examples of digital technologies being used in physical craft reconstructions, such as Jennifer Gray's Pictish drinking horn fitting, which you can see at the top. I approach reinterpretation of archaeology uniquely through digital craft practice, engaging prior knowledge and a tacit understanding of my chosen materials. I place equal consideration on context and material selection in support of my concept. Matt Ratto, Associate Professor and Director of the Critical Making Lab at the University of Toronto, called for critical making, highlighting material and conceptual engagement to promote novel understandings by makers themselves. Digital processes used in conjunction with craft practices enable me to push the boundaries and physically manifest works that would be impossible to visualise otherwise. The concept of object biography suggests artefacts as a sequence of activities and interactions travelling through a suggested lifetime. <coughs> this might involve the procurement of raw materials, the manufacture or making process, and a final resting place in deposition after record. However, this suggests that a life history framework might also include the reuse or maintenance of an object. Ruth Tringham went further and sought to understand the way in which objects are invested with meaning through social interactions. What I find most interesting is that this implies that meanings change and are renegotiated through the life of the object. Daniel Miller, in his warm introduction to the anthropology of material culture, the comfort of things, and similarly Shelley Truckle in evocative objects, both attest to the power of inanimate attachment. We bestow particular significance to everyday things, but also revere these objects with which we attach as a general means of remembrance. Walter Benjamin uses the term aura to describe that which may be potentially lost in the age of mechanical reproduction. Benjamin related the rise of the mass-produced commodity form to new understandings of aura and suggested that it might refer to the sense of association surrounding an entity. Correspondences and myriad relationships provoked by an object. Although there's great potential for digital reproduction, and I usually start in this way, I begin to reinterpret by moving from the digital to the traditional, back and forth, and in this way I hope to retain the aura of a find. As you can see from the previous few slides, the three piece of, um, pieces of stone mould have moved through a transformative process with an influence exerted from the digital. Moving back and forth from actual to virtual, hand to machine, we now have a rough copy of the Bronze Age dress pin. In the case of the enlarged dress pin shown here in blue foam, it's an exact upscale replica of the small recreated pin. We never had a pin, only broken bits of stone mould. This piece will now be cast in plaster of Paris, 
creating a mould suitable for ceramic production. Using gabbroic clay found on the lizard in Cornwall and used throughout prehistory in Cornwall, I'll make several large pins. One of them will be broken and the shards deposited and buried on the site at Tremeau. Each burial point will be tracked by GPS like geocaching and this will then be in the exhibition. This means of course that anyone might seek out those shards and remake the pin, taking the archaeological process full circle. The use of an object biography or life cycle is key in expressing how materials move through the hands of the maker to form objects through tacit knowledge. In the recycling of an object, through observance of the fragments or remains, it's possible to reanimate aspects of the process. Anthropologists Schiffer and Hollenbach proposed an extension to the life history framework to include technologies and associated material practices and the reconceptualization of the object as a complex range of interactions. By using digital tools, it's possible to further enhance the material and work into it on a new level, allowing in some cases for the invisible to be made visible as part of the journey, as it particularly evident in the case of the oven gloves that I made. To negotiate the place and the use of the digital tool within this inquiry, I strive to understand the relationship between people technology in place over the long durée. In the case of the site at Tremeau, the final objects have a unique biography, stretching out over time, but ultimately reinterpreted using only site-specific tools. I'm affecting the post-depositional life history of the Tremeau finds through a further contribution to this sequence of interactions. Reanimating objects or engaging a transformation means that in a sense I'm now recycling. I consider how people interpenetrate in their understanding of the past through objects produced in the present. I propose that the influence exerted from the digital, combined with more traditional craft techniques and processes, might reconceptualise archaeological finds to enhance the communication of this incredible site over time. <laughs>